Using SymPy, we could calculate closed form expressions for integrals and derivatives. Many times, it is impossible or extremely computationally inefficient to obtain such expressions. For these circumstances, numerical differentiation and numerical integration obtain as good solution choices. Since the derivative has a formal mathematical definition involving an infinitesimal limit, what happens if we take delta x to be very small but not actually going to zero? In that case, we would call this a finite difference. We're going to write a finite difference on a grid or a set of points. We'll see this more in a moment. Here, we're describing this as position x and position x plus delta x, or what we might call point n and point n plus 1, which are separated from each other by a distance delta x. We're going to write n and n plus 1 as superscripts. To be clear, these are not exponents, these are superscripts. Sometimes when we start working with multidimensional simulations, it gets kind of cluttered to keep track of everything, and you end up with superscripts and subscripts around your numbers. We won't get quite that complicated, but I want you to get used to seeing this kind of notation in practice. We solve on a grid in time and space as before. We've done this already, if you think about uh, some of the, the situations that we've done with Lin space, using arrays. In this case, we have a dx dt, which is, of course, the definition of velocity. But we can approximate this, even if it's changing over time, as xn plus 1 minus xn over delta t, the difference in time. Previously, we were looking at a difference in f as a function of x. Now we're looking at x as a function of t. Keep that in mind, because we're going to keep changing that from time to time as we move forward. Sometimes x and y are going to be our independent variables. Sometimes t is going to be our independent variables. If we rearrange this, we can write an expression for the n plus 1 instance of x as a function of xn and the other quantities. xn plus 1 equals xn plus delta t v naught. This gives us a way of calculating on the basis of past points, what a subsequent point will be. We can do this in space, we can do this in time. Sometimes this gets really messy in the algebra. We're going to stick to reasonably straightforward simulations here. Most engineering calculations end up being based on some kind of grid. It may not always be a square grid, if you look at finite element simulations, for instance, if you go Google structural mechanics models, you'll see all sorts of polygonal triangular grids that have been set up for things. There's more sophisticated methods than finite difference available as well, but finite difference is a good entrance to understanding this world of engineering calculations. Numerical integration, also known as numerical quadrature, should already be a little bit familiar to you. We're going to use it in cases where analytical solutions, such as SymPy would provide, simply aren't possible. And there are many, many circumstances in which this condition is true. You develop tools like trapezent, which perform trapezoidal integration, according to the trapezoidal rule, in a previous homework. Now we're going to look at scipy.integrate.quad, which is a general purpose quadrature or numerical integration function. SciPy is like NumPy and SymPy. It's a large library of loosely related scientific tools that are useful for us to have available. Because it's such a long, complicated name to write this out, we are going to say from scipy.integrate import quad whenever we use this. Here we have an integral that's easy to solve and relatively easy to check quickly by hand. Our integrand is 1 minus x squared. It's a definite integral from 0 to 1 in x. We're going to define this as a function. We're going to import quad. And we're going to run this as quad integrand being the function from 0 to 1.
In this case, it gives us two-thirds back as the real part of our answer, and because of whatever method quad was using internally, there's a small amount of numerical noise. Now this value is 7.4 times 10 to the negative 15th. It is zero. So if I asked you for the answer to this question, your answer would be 0 0.6666, or two-thirds, and you would throw away that little bit of numerical error that's coming in from whatever technique quad is using internally. If for some reason a function is not available for y, in other words, you don't have an integrand, but you do have a set of known points, you can calculate using samples with scipy.integrate.simps for a Simpson's rule integration. Simpson's rule is a little bit more general than the trapezoidal rule that you've used previously. So while you can use trapezant to solve these problems, Simps is also available to you. In this case, we'll go ahead and import it. We'll define a set of x points from 0 to 1. We'll have our y be 1 minus x squared, so we can check our answer easily against the numerical quadrature we just performed. And we get the same answer